Shalom Aleichem, Rabbi Dr. Eliezer Brat. It's a pleasure to have you back. Although this time, it's something different. We've never done this before. The world just lost our, our Gadol, our Saratera. That's how he's referred to. Moran Harav Chaim Kanievsky, Zeichet Zadik Kaddish Levracha. And both of us know that we have no business even discussing his Gadlos. There were so many sides to Reb Chaim, whether it was his Asmada, his Chavis, his Eitzes, his Adracha, his Simchas Achayim. But we figured there's one small Nakuda that we could focus on and maybe bring out a perspective that may not be focused on elsewhere, and that is his Svarim. And to see, we all know he wrote many, many Svarim that were written on Mitzayas of Torah that have not been touched before. But if we could see and understand how Reb Chaim was able to take his, his, his knowledge of Kol Kula and create, produce the Svarim that he produced, that may be an insight you know, from a different perspective, a different angle of Reb Chaim's Godless. And it should be, it should be a Zikarin. It should be a Zikarin and it should, be, it should lift us up to be able to want to learn these Svarim and look into them. And it should be a Ili Nishmasa, whatever we could do, a little bit to ourselves to be able to take away and grow a little bit from this big, big Aveda. So how are you today, Reb Eliezer? Everyone's busy um, already ever since Matzah Shabbos, writing or saying their thoughts about Agoyim Reb Chaim Kanievsky. So I decided for my own benefit that I'm going to add in my own two cents into the mix. I'm sure others will say similar things that I, I'm saying over here. They'll say it better, or some maybe already did say it. But when a gadol of such a caliber is nifter, it's only proper to reflect on what we lost and what we can learn from his highly productive life. Ever since I heard the news right before Shabbos in Eretz Yisrael, I started going through my mental files of what I knew about him, pulling out various svarim of what I had purchased over the years, and tried to analyze a bit the greatness of this guy of what I saw in his written words. I'm trying to put what I saw in word. I'm trying to put in words what I saw for myself. And as always, we tend to take for granted something we always had. We thought. Reb Chaim would be the person that would, he would be there greeting Mashiach, especially if this is a topic he was Isaac in. Um, I'm doing this also specifically because I feel people, not everyone is familiar with the real Reb Chaim. What do I mean the real Reb Chaim? It's okay really for a Gadol to mean different things for different people. There's different aspects of a Gadol or character traits of a Gadol that talk to different people. And Reb Chaim was, was no different. Just as an example, there was a great Gadol, um, the Chassam Seifer, the Chassam Seifer had hundreds and hundreds of Talmidim. Two of his Tal- two of his from his greatest Talmidim, one was the Maram Shik, and, and another was Reb Chaim Seifer, author of the Machne Chaim. Both these Talmidim learned by the Chassam Seifer for many many years, and and their main Rebbe that they held was their Rebbe that they got everything from was the Chassam Seifer. If one would go and pull out and sit down and learn a Chubas Maram Shik versus a Chubas Machne Chaim, you would not believe that these two people sat by the same person. What's the explanation? So I heard many years ago from my Rebbe, Rabbi Spitz, that what what it, different people focus on different things from a Gadol, and you could have to such an extent that they will take out things that you can't imagine that both taking it out from the same person. So to Reb Chaim, for some people he was a Balmaifis, for other people he was an advisor, for Das Taira, all different issues, lines out the door for, for hours and hours, getting brachas, People sort of advice from all over the world on all different things in recent years. That that's what spoke to some people. Others were upset about these things. I have no interest in getting involved in this. For me, what's important and what I'm trying to to stress in in the presentations that will follow is his the legacy of Tyre, what he left behind, his 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 productivity and his written his incredible amount of svarim that he wrote and what we could possibly learn from them, what made them so unique and what, what they stood out about them. Okay, excellent. So I'm trying to think back. You know, I grew up, Reb Chaim was already the Sar HaTorah, Reb Chaim was already a Gadol Hadar, Reb Chaim was already a household name. There were actually other Gedolim, Manhigim. When I was growing up, Reb Chaim became, you know, the 
so to speak, manhig of many um, streams or sects of Klal Yisrael, uh, you know, over the last you know bunch of years. Um, what's your first? What's your first encounter? What are your first memories of Reb Chaim? So interesting is that my first introduction to him was in elementary school in the United States in the late 1980s. While I was I used to collect those days, it was common collecting the Dylan cards, Dylan pictures. At that time, it was considered very rare to have a picture of him. Somehow, I got a few, just to show. Here was the here was the five some from the five pictures of him that I had. These were some of them, and it was considered very rare. No one, barely ever even heard of him. At the same time, an extra special picture was to have a picture with him and his great father-in-law, Rebel Yashif. This was a picture that I had. This was considered this was extra expensive because it had both of them. And interesting in those years, Rebel Yashif in America at least was not as famous either. We're talking about before the internet, we're talking about a whole different world than today, where everything is in, in it's a whole different world. Um, whispers in those days was that he was the son, Rukhain Kreski was the son of the special great guy that everyone knew about, even in America, the stipler. And that was how I first was introduced to him. As time went on in my high school years, I started to hear about him a bit more. But I cannot pinpoint what was the first encounter that I had with his svarim. But I do recall that it was, his. I think, his Sefer Sich Sada, which we'll get to talk at great length, but it'll drop today, um, which was what got me to hearing, learning his some of his Tyra. Okay, so as mentioned, Reb Chaim wrote many, many svarim on all different areas of Taira. And what's unique about Reb Chaim's svarim is that there are so many different styles of the way he wrote his svarim in different places. So, obviously, we can't cover everything today. And hopefully we'll be able to do some more of these and talk some more about Reb Chaim's svarim. So, which which sefer particularly do you want to speak about first or now? So first, I, the, I I want to just give a drop of background to before I get to the safer that I, I want to talk about um, is as follows. The, the, Reb Chaim Kanievsky had tremendous, um, there was a f- different people, different G'dayim were tremendous influences on him and his writings, particularly his uncle, the Chazanish, his father, the Stipler, the Mishnah Bura, and the Vilna Gaim. Throughout, not not so much today, but throughout the ne- the next presentation, or, the, or I have no idea how many will be, but to discuss his goals and what he was writing, what he was trying to do, and to to put it in somewhat perspective to show how these gedolim that had an influence on him, it also influenced in his particular areas of writing, his way of writing, what he chose to write. But today, looking around, one will see that there's so much. So, so much material about him. Now, it's very unique that we have. Normally, when a gadol is nifter, they first start writing about the gadol. What was so unique about him, his history, everyone scrambles. Um, even even, even in recent years with the internet, a lot of times when a gadol is nifter, for example, when Nassim Tzvi Finkel was nifter a few years ago, so the Mishpacha magazine delayed printing it because they felt they're not going to do justice um, about him, and they have to scramble to get information to talk to to write about him at least for the first issue, and then as time goes on, they they add more and more. Rechaim Knievsky already in his lifetime, there's a, a wealth a wealth of information about him, and because in the, in recent years people have been fascinated by him. Um, just to mention, um, because this is we're talking about the Svarim. There's a safer written. It's called Hasvarim. The Sefer is put out by a family member in B'nai Brak, and this deals with a lot of interesting things, a lot of the backstory of a lot of things about the Svarim of Rechaim Kanievsky. And what... Have you ever seen this Sefer called Hachavis? Fascinating. Same author, co- correct. That That is the same author. He also put out a Sefer Hachavis, which we also will eventually get to discussing that. And what you see is that we what sometimes it takes years till you get the backstory of why he was writing the svarim or what was his interest and fa- fascinating side facts about the sefer. A lot of it's in these svarim already. 
Another thing is that there was a fellow, someone who was able to get very close with Rav Chaim Kanievsky. His name is Rav Tiger. And he has a few booklets and a, a, a few beautiful videos with conversations with Rukhain Kanievsky, which are Kadai to see on the internet. You get to see Rukhain Kanievsky in a in a whole like uh, there's no fanfare going on around him, and he talks to him about Svarim and different his writings, and he helped him, he, he used to comment to him. And, and it's very it's very interesting to see. So what the, these just this is just a tip of Shabiyam of what there's out there um, on the internet, or people. There's so many people that spoke to him, and we're talking about a year that was '94. So there's people. A lot of people had to do with him, and and people have different angles and different insights and whatever. So it's just out there, and obviously some of the things from this farm we'll use in the following presentation. You mentioned of Tiger. I've also seen different clips. Chaim seemed fascinated about a Rabbeinu Yeruchim with the Beis Yosef's. Hagai is on it. Did you see that? Have you seen that? Like different times, he speaks spoke yeah, about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's just like they're, they're small clips, but they put them up on the internet already for the past few years, and and they're, they're fascinating. I find each one of them very, very full of a, a nice, cute pieces of information, tidbits, as I like to call them, anecdotes. Maybe whatever. before you now, Rabbi Eliezer, Maybe before you continue. Is it known like how he wrote his farm? What was his mahalach? You mentioned of Tiger. I know he was involved in editing. What, what was his mahalach and how he wrote this farm? You know? I mean, through this thing, some of the pieces of information that I read or I saw from different people, I'll, I'll mention when we get through discussing some of the farm. But um, the first, um, in this, the safer that we're going to talk about shortly, um, maybe it, it might come out yet to talk about it. But um, I just. Just two last points before we actually get down to, to, the, to the first safer that I would like to talk about is as follows. Chaim Kanievsky was a man that we know he's finished Shas, Bavli, Yerushalmi, and many other areas of Tyra yearly, made a seum on it for, for years and years and years. This is also demonstrating the safer that you showed us, Hachaivis. He had this thing called Chaivis, which basically was he every day he had a quota of how much he would learn. Of different svarim, starting from the Bavli, going on to Rishalmi, to finish every year these svarim, which is remarkable. But it's not that just that he, so, okay, so he did it. It's not like he did a Shnai Mikra Vechatargum, so he added to Shnai Mikra Vechatargum these svarim. He, we're going to see in the course of what I hope to discuss how that was helped him in, the, in, in his svarim, what he was able to do, which was unparalleled. Now, Chas Vashalom, I'm not coming to compare him in any way to the, to the, to the um, but there was a quote that in, there's different versions of the quote, but basically Rabbi Avram ben Agra, when he described his father, and Rechaim Velazhner similarly when he described his Rabbi de Gra, when he wanted to discuss his yeda, how much information he knew, how much Torah he knew, so he said a sentence, which he said a few sentences. It said, he learned Mikra, Mishnah, Halacha, Yisvagadu, Safra. The Sefer Talmud Bavli v'Yushalmi v'Toiseftois v'Chol Habraisus Ad Shaya Mishnasay Sedur Befiv. Then it says he um, he also knew and he learned carefully Safra Sefri Toisefta Perkeder Abelazer Yushalmi Talmud Bavli Say the Oilam Ma'isa Bereishis Seferi Chalois Sisrei Taira. This is what they said about the Vilna Gaon. Now, some people when they when they heard it, they said, okay. He, they said it about him, but who said it's true? Because at that time, there was nothing printed from the Vilna Gaon. In his lifetime, he printed nothing. And then slowly, slowly, today, for example, we could see we have the Gra wrote on all this. And it, it's something incredible. That Tyra is just, it's not, not to take away from any other Gadol, and we're not playing any anything, but to see that that how vast Tyra is. It's endless, and that someone went through it in a systematic way and knew it all and wrote about it, We and we have it. It's not like even a, um, a thing that, you know, they just said. And similarly, the Vilna Gaon had a special, ta- a special unique Talmud, Reb Zalman Velazhin, the younger brother of Chaim Velazhin. And the same thing they said about him. What was he bucking in? So the quote goes, Rui Chesko Faival, who knew him personally and wrote an incredible work called Toldus Adam, he knew Kol Sefer Tanach Me Roshat Zayfai Im Shalish At Targumim Unkelus Yonisim Menaziel The Targum Suvim. Then he says, he knew Shas Pavli Yushalmi Safra Sefri Mechilta Alfasi Rambam Tor Medrash Rabba Yalkut Shmoni Say the Olam Zayr Tikunim. Now, 
these are incredible, incredible quotes, and these are of our special gedolim that we had a few hundred years back. What's remarkable is when you read these quotes and you hear and you hear about what they say about Rechaim Kanievsky, it's amazing that he also, someone in our generation that just was Nifter, also was someone that knew this. Now, again, Rechaim Kanievsky, we don't have to wait 10 years, 20 years to see it. We were Zaycha to have it in the Svarim that he printed in his lifetime already from a young age he was started to work on them, and we have them today. And that's what's remarkable. To, and and we will discuss through the presentations different um, different svarm. Okay, fine. With that fascinating introduction, so it sounds like you have one safer that you want to focus on now. Which safer is that? So the interesting is a safer which I I took a liking to it many years ago. It's called Kiryat Melech, which is a safer which is Makiris on the Rambam. Kairos on the Rambam. So many of us have gone through the yeshiva system. We know many different farm on the Rambam. For some reason, Kairos Melech is not, you know, on the top of the pile. So maybe take us through what it is and what kind of safer it is, and maybe why isn't it on top of the pile? Okay. So, so the truth is that this safer um, begins. It begins with a, with a, with a, with a kuntris. Rav Chaim Kanievsky, as I mentioned earlier, um, he had this thing that he went through Rambam uh, dozens of times. He made it um, at certain. It became into his chayvus that he would do daily, and he would be messiahim it yearly. But it seems he learned it many times, even maybe even before those chayvus. And at one point in the in the um, late 1950s, he 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 um, published. I don't know if he published it then, but he finished a work called. Kuntris Shar HaMelech. This was a Kuntris on the Hagdama of the Ramam to Yad as, as well known, the Ramam has a fascinating introduction to his Yad HaZaka, where he outlines different things, including a lot of historical information, the Seder HaDairis, um, and certain interesting facts about Tarish Shabal Peh. Very, very important Sefer Kedai to learn. Reb Chaim, worked on the Sefer, and he wrote an incredible, incredible work, using to show the Makairis of the Rambam, where the Rambam was basing this, because the Rambam doesn't say where he got all what he says from, and he wanted to, and when does he finish it? On Leil Purim Tafshin Yud Zayin. That's how he writes. Now, we find out now, the backstory is, he why did he rush to finish it then? Because he wanted to give it to his father as a Mishleich Manus on Purim, and he gave it to his father. It's one of the Svarim that he gave his father as a Mishleich Manus. This seems there's another Sefer at a different time he gave his father also. Um, now, is this a discussion that's brought up? You allowed to give Svarim from Mishleich Manus? Are you Mekai Mishleich Manus? So, I don't know if you're allowed to, but it has been discussed, and there's a lot written about Svarim that were. It seems that sometimes it was more just. You know, an excuse, not because you're yaitza necessarily, um, but it seems that sometimes it might have been they Pasha didn't have anything, so at least to be yaitza some aspect of something, so they gave svarim. But, th- but there's a lot been written about people have collected which svarim were actually given for Shalach Manus. It's famous, the, Mishla, the, the Manois Halevi, Mechir Yayin, and many other svarim were written as Shalach Manus to different people. The Mechir Yayin was written, Ramah gave it to his father, etc. Et a, a lot has been written about it. Yeah, so whether you make the mitzvah or not, Pasha does not, but it's certainly an Indian. You find the Gedolim have, have given Sfar for, for Mishleach Manas. Okay, continue. Now, um, so he so in this Sefer, he does what he, he's Mepharish, Mamish called Tag Shabbatag of the Rambam in Sekuntras. Where is it found? In the Sefer Sikh Hasada, which I mentioned earlier, was what, which, is, which includes in it a few different Chiburim, small Chiburim of Reb Chaim, which some others will discuss at a different time. Now, then, a little later, he put, maybe even a year or two later, a year later or something, he puts out a sefer in the back of a Rambam. He was asked by the publishers. He had a chibur. It's called Kiryat Melech. Okay. So what's the Kiryat Melech? So Kiryat Melech is a chibur, which is, as it says in the Shar, and the Shar is written by Rebchaim Kanievsky, Tziyunei Mekairis Rabbim Al Piskei Rambam, we're 
Also some corrections, and it's so basically it's first printed in 1958 in the back of a Rambam. Then it's printed again and again, and each time Reb Chaim Kanievsky would add more and more tikkunim. Sometimes he added a thousand more makayris and another thousand more makayris, and um, eventually today, if you buy it, it has at least just at least six more editions. With each one has additions and corrections and stuff about it. Okay. This Sefer, as opposed to most all other Svarmavas, has a skama from who? His father. And his father writes about it. I was asked by my son, I guess, to write a Yaskama. And he says, Beroish Sifroi Hanifla. But then this, the, the stipler says, I'm not a, I don't give askamas. But then he says why it's amazing to be that he was he he came to sources of the Rambam that people were not aimed on. Okay. Then Rav Chaim writes a Hagdama about it, what he did, how he learned the Rambam, and he learned it again. And you can see from here, from the various Hagdamas, he has three Hagdamas from in the different editions, how Imamish sat and learned the Rambam. And basically, it's it's a few hundred page work where he has Makairis for the Rambam. So now, before I get to explaining what it is, what's so significant about this, um Already in 1970, the Sefer impressed um, um, people of all types. So much so, the Marshal, um, his the Stiper and Rebbe Chaim had a relative, an interesting person, not for now, named Saul Lieberman, Professor Saul Lieberman. He wrote a, he was asked to recommend of a, a tremendous Talmud Chacham, who he felt should get a, um, a funding from a certain prize. Which project should he recommend? And and he so Solomon wrote in a few different suggestions, and he writes that in this is in 1970 specifically about the um, Kiryat Melech. He says as follows: He says, "I feel that there's a um, who should be recommended for this prize." Rochaim Knievsky of Bnei Brak. It was called the Rothschild Prize. He pub- He says he published already at that time a dozen, um, a half a dozen works. One of them sources on the Rambam, which was published separately. Um, he says he, um, he. Then he says his notes on the Masechtas Katanias has no parallel. He is known only among a small circle of scholars, because he didn't write his name in his works, and he writes so much so that he's even more impressed with the than with Reb Chaim than the stipler. And he was into the stipler plenty. Also, his relative, he knew him well. Anyway, this letter was discovered by um, um, Professor Mark Shapiro. He printed it. He printed it once a few years back on the Svarn blog. Eventually, someone took it without permission and put it on Matziv. Um, but they did attribute it to Mark Shapiro at least. But he didn't give it to them. Um, but this is a fascinating letter because we see even people, at least people that understood the Rambam, um, which I'm going to hopefully explain the significance of the sefer shortly, um, were blown away by this work. So now, with all this, the Stipler and so to speak, Sho Lieberman and and many other people, they say that they uh, in one of these places I saw, even Shmuel Rozovsky quoted it once in Sheer, and he who's like he, he they told the Reb Chaim about that also. But it, it, there's something very unique about the Sefer. So Shai is what's so unique about the Sefer? As you as you asked us, you asked me just a few moments ago. You were learned in yeshiva and you never heard about it. And I'll be honest, in yeshiva I never once heard it quoted either. Um, in all different. I never really heard a quote. So what's so unique about it? So to backtrack, one must understand the following. You have to have the following context. The Rambam wrote a sefer, Yad HaZaka, which we all, everyone's very familiar with. Immediately after the Rambam wrote the sefer, there was a problem. What was the problem? There's no Makairis. Where does he get what he's saying from? Now, it seems possibly the Rambam was himself going to write a, to explain where his sources were from, to, maybe he changed his mind, that he realized that he should have, he shouldn't have. That's a, it's a arichos, not for now. Now, so already from when the Rambam wrote his work, made it available, Rishonim, for, that, for this, for the past, and then Achreinim also for centuries, or tr- and then in the yeshiva world also, one of our, one of the things that people try to do is to understand where, did the Rambam, why does the Rambam say what he's saying? Where does he get it from? So, in the yeshiva world today, in the past hundred something years, it's um, the, became, this is famous, the brisker, the, the brisker, the brisker world is very into with Rabchayim and, and, the, and the descendants afterwards. 
with using different um, methods that they have to understand Reb Chaim's, to understand the Rambam. But already, but but beforehand, also people were Isaac to understand the Makayus of the Rambam. Now, to quote something to to help us get context of what the significance of the Sefer was, there's a famous letter. The first time I, sh- I I remember I came across it, I did not believe it. I, I Pasha could not believe that it was real. And just like there's been other letters of the Rambam and other materials of the of the, of the Rambam that people thought are forgeries, some Artaka forgeries. I thought maybe it's a forgery, but then I looked into it. It's not a forgery. It's 100% authentic. And a lot has been written about this letter. And basically, a Talmud of his was learning a Peshtikal Rambam in Hilchus Reitzeach, and he couldn't, and he, and he wanted to know the source. So he went to the Rambam, his Rebbe, and said, where's the Makar for this? And the Rambam, and this is the letter of the Rambam, um, we have uh, um, even Shilat prints it from the, I think we might even have the Arabic edition of it, even Hayoim. But the Rambam starts looking at it, and he, and he says, maybe you look in the Gemara where this is, in Sanhedrin or Makkas. The Talmud says, I look there, it's not there. It says the Rambam, Shama bi Yerushalmi. Maybe it's in Yerushalmi. So the Talmud says, I looked, it's not there. Maybe it's in the Taisefta. The Rambam was very nervous. Uh, the Rambam says, Ani, um, I think maybe it's in Gittin. So there's a Zaytik Asugi that relates to this. They look in Gittin, it's not there. And then, afterwards, the Rambam remembers that it was in Yavamis, in a Zaytik Asugya. So the story goes, and it, so it says over here, is that um, we learn from here is that even the Rambam, there was a, a, there was a, at least he forgot some, for a short period of time even, Makar, of something he said. The Rambam writes in, in Hagdama to Pirish Mishnah somewhere that it's Ein B'yechilis Ish Liskar Kol HaTalmud. Akadei Kachi says such a thing. Now, so anyway, this this um, um, tshuva of the Rambam, the Shail is, which Rambam is he talking about? Which Rambam Hilchas Ritzeach has this whole backstory? So Lemaisa, Baruch Hashem, we have from Matasir Strashon and many others figured out exactly which Rambam it is. It's a real, and it's a real, not only do I say that we have the actual tshuva, it's a real story. But what we learn from here is two very important points. That even the Rambam, there, there was a, for maybe it was a short period of time, but he forgot himself because it wasn't in that specific place where the sugi is. It was in a Zaytika place in Yavamas that, that somehow he used it. We also see from here something else into the world of the Rambam, how he wrote his Sefer. He didn't just use the Bavli. He, the Rambam says, maybe it's in the Yushalmi. Why? Because he used the Yushalmi extensively in his work. Similarly, he also used the Taisefta. These are Chiburim that weren't used by everyone, but the Rambam did, and he used it. Now, moving further, um, there's a famous story, and this story has been said I'm not going to say, um, they say it about different, you could put into the story whichever gadol you want to be, any lit, um, that was Isaac in the Rambam. Basically, Adam Gadol Pliny was Isaac his whole life into the Rambam, and, he's, and, and he, had, he felt he had answers to understand where the Rambam got what he said from everywhere. Except for three places, he had three problems that he didn't know where the Rambam got it from. He comes, he, he, he's Nifter, comes up to Shemayim. Before they don him, he says, one minute, I need to speak to the Rambam first, if you don't mind. I've been waiting my whole life to know where's the three, where's the Makaris of these three Rambams. He goes and speaks, they say, no problem. He speaks to the Rambam. The Rambam tells him, this, it's a Tais Atfus. This is a Gemara, is a Taisefta. This is a Sifri Zutta. This is a Mechil to the Rajvi. You wax him across the face. As I am from in a Rambam, this is how you answer a Rambam. You have to give a whole Lamda Shashtikal Torah to understand the whole Mahalach a Rambam. This is just to illustrate that a lot of times, in, especially in more past hundred something years, a, a lot of times a, a Makar of a Rambam really could possibly be a, a Makar in a Gemara or even a Chazal that somehow got lost. What do I mean? I mean is that the Rambam had a wealth, it's Nisgala Hayoim, that the Makaris, the Rambam, the Rambam had a Mashunadika amount of literature of Tyre Shabbat that a lot of times were lost. And, and some of these materials, when are they discovered? Only in in past hundred years. So I'm going to give one example. And that is the, the we know that um, um, for, for 
we're familiar with, there's a mechilta, mechilta der Rishmo. When one learns Chumash Shemais, there's a madra, there's Madrashi Alacha from Mechilta de Rabbi Shmuel. It seems Rishonim had a chibur called Mechilta de Rajbi from Rabbi Shem Bayechai, but it was lost. But we see it's quoted often by Rishonim. Um, some uh, somewhere around a hundred years ago, certain discoveries were made, and they chapped, they found some of these, um, some of um, pieces of what they believed to be the Mechilta. The Rajbi. Okay, so they found it. So um, different people were very excited about it. Bottom line, make a long story short, is as follows: from these um, kairos, um it will start to be noticed that we may now be able to have a makar for different things. At, at one point, I'm not sure who was the first person who noticed it. Now we have makairis, certain rambams that we didn't know where they're from. In this safe from Mechilta de Rajbi. Eventually, more material came out, um, more discoveries in Mechilta de Rajbi. Originally, it was Rav David Tzvi Hoffman worked on it. Eventually, later on, Yaakov Nachem Epstein and his Talmud, Ezra Malamid, that we, and we have them. Um, you could buy them in a, lo- in a local farm store. They're available on Hebrew books. But what's the significance? In the 19, I think it was in the 1940s, Ramon Achim Kasher went and wrote a safer called Harambam Ve'a Mechilta de Rajbi, and he shows numerous Rambams, the Makar is from this Mechilta de Rajbi. It seems that um, 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 he ended up redoing the Sefer, but maybe it wasn't as many as he thought originally, but definitely Makairis of the Rambam or Nizgala from this Chibur. This is just one such example. When one opens up the Kiryas Melech, one will see Kaseder, a Makar for the Rambam, will be this Mechilta de Rajbi. He had the Mechilta de Rajbi, from Hafnin, from the, from Yaakov Nachem Epstein, he quotes it, Kaseder, and he uses it in other places, other Svarim of his also. I mean, to say it became part of his knowledge, and he also used to answer up the Rambam, not only from his incredible knowledge of Yerushalmi and Tesefta. You see him using Midrashim and Targumim. He'll use Targum Yonis and Benazil to show a Makar for Rambam and Mechil to the Rajbi. Now, in recent, in recent years, Mechon, Zichr, and Aaron went ahead and they also redid, they, to make a frumer version of Mechil to the Rajbi, because the recent, the, the edition up till now was from academics, so they need to make a frum edition. So they went and they wrote letter. the person who put it out has beautiful letters of Rechaim Knievsky handling with it. And they have a list of many times how Rechaim Knievsky uses it in the in his Svarim, especially in Kiryat Melech, but also in other places. So we see that the, the we see this incredible Yeda of Rechaim Knievsky, that he would take his knowledge that he learned, and he used it to answer up to show Makairis of thousands of Rambams. Now, sometimes it could be that other people were aimed on it also, but the, the when you go through the Sefer, it's almost 300 pages, He do, he a lot of times you'll open it up and you'll say, oh, they already found it. He's not trying to collect what everyone else said. He, it's more... And things that they weren't aimed on, or at least he didn't see people being aimed on, and then he would, um, and then he tries to, uh, he'll, he writes very bekitzer, but I'll say, uh, this Rambam, I ain't here. A lot of times you'll look there, it might just shed some light to understand the Rambam, it might not be necessarily Makar, it might be a partial Makar, which also one always has to be careful um, about. Now, um, and so, so this is one Nakuda from the Sefer that we see in this Kiryat Melech, how he uses his, his incredible knowledge, not only of Yerushalmi, there were other G'daylim that were outstanding in Yerushalmi that did use it to answer, to show the Rambam and his relationship with the Yerushalmi and Tesefta also. Um, the Vilna Gain shows a lot with the Yerushalmi and the Rambam. Um, in, in recent generations, Rav Zevin points out that already Rameir Simcha and the Ragachav are also were very into showing this. Rechaim Knievsky also does many cases that they didn't, but 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 I'm, what I'm saying is that he went even further. The, for example, the Mechilta de Rajvi, another Hebrew that he did was a discovery called Sefer Zuta, which was also a very a more recent discovery in the past hundred plus years. He also uses it for his Hebrew. Now the, the sefer is not full of lamdish a long shtikl taira being to 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 um to explain rambams. It just shows you and you open it up. A lot of times you'll see no one has the makar and you all of a sudden can find the makar in here. Now, just a few more short points about this. He he um another thing we know about the rambam is the rambam um 
that his Makairis were, he, at least some Makairis around was from the Ga'inim. So here, Ga'inim literature, even today as we speak, there's new discoveries and new materials of the Ga'inim are being printed. Reb Chaim Kanievsky was well aware of what was going on on this too, and I just randomly opened up a page in Hilcha Shechenim, towards the end of Hilcha Shechenim, and over there I find numerous times on these pages, there could be 60, 70 Rambams in this, on this page, he, he will bring you Chubis Arif um, a bunch of times. He'll bring you Ritzgeus. He'll bring you Eitzar Ga'inim. He'll bring you Rav Haigayim. Um, all different things of these, of, of early literature, uh, uh, Chubis Rav Haigayim and Dar Zarua to Bim Yashiv Rambam. Kaseder, Kaseder, I'm just, I'm, I'm just looking at one page, the amount of times I was like, it's unbelievable. He, he, and he even has a list where he shows, where he collects various times the Ramam specifically says Gainim, but then he shows which Gainim now, based on ma- new materials that we have, and say he was, it wasn't only that he knew what was printed until, let's say, 1900, he, whatever the new discovery of many, at least many new discoveries in the past hundred years was brought to his attention, and he incorporated it in his learning, and then he used it into his Rambam to use it for, for different Makairis. As, as an example, and to, um, um, it was, the Chubis Arif also had an influence on the Rambam, and Rukhain Knievsky, and this is interesting, this Tigerman talks about it, and I, other places, there was a Hash of a Yid, Rav David Tzvi Rachtin, a tremendous Tamil Chacham, who was also an Ifter, who, who also had a Kesha with Rukhain Knievsky. One of the areas that this Rav David Tzvi Rachtin was involved with was the was the was the Rif putting out new Chubis or manuscript, there seems to be even more Chubis of the Rif that still haven't been printed, and one of the things is, sometimes it could help with the Rambam, um, now, so Rav David Rochtin had these manuscripts, and he had Rav Chaim Kanievsky, who wrote Ha'aris on them. Sadly, Rav Chaim Kanievsky says on one of these videos that it was lost. But Rav Chaim Kanievsky, what he did, but he did see a lot of materials. So there's a few pages where a few times it'll say in the Chuvas Arif that he saw of the Xaviyad of Rav David Rochtin that now the material, we say the Chuvas Arif actually, we, I think we do have, but the material, the Chibur that Rav Chaim Kanievsky was worked on for this Rav David Rochtin was lost. A sad story, Rav Chaim Kanievsky says, I think maybe on a boat, uh, something happened. But in the introduction, he re- he mentions that a few times, I'm quoting, because I had material, we say he's using even manuscript material that was given to him, that he worked on in this work of the Rambam, which obviously is not so much found in the standard yeshiva world, where you're, you're going to be answering Rambam based on a manuscript of a tshuva sarif. Okay. To be messiah with one last point about, about a makar of the Rambam, the makar for, the, for Chaim Kanievsky in his Hebrew on the Rambam, is the Zayar. It's a famous discussion. Tons has been written about, a whole Chiburim even have been written about, did the Rambam see the Zayar or not? And furthermore, because um, different people notice, uh, if you say that the Rambam did have the Zayar, then we could have an additional Makar of a Chibur Chazali, um, early Chibur, and that would help us understand certain Rambams. Famously, Rebuva Margolis wrote a series of articles, eventually was put into um, a booklet, and then eventually, pretty recently, put into a Sefer, of various Zayar. If we assume the Rambam had the Zayar, we could understand the Makar from many different Rambams. Rav Chaim Kanievsky does, the Vilna Gain also um, sometimes seems to go with this. Rav Chaim Kanievsky a bunch of times uses the Zayar, which is showing an interesting um, point about Rav Chaim Kanievsky, how he read, the, how he learned the Zayar. Again, this is using it in um, um as a Halachatik Achibor, but he's using it throughout the, um, as a Makar for the Rambam. Sometimes, interesting, he quotes it based on, he says, Rebuva Margolis. He had a tremendous chavivus for Rebuva Margolis. He knew him. He met him a few times in Tel Aviv, library, and he liked him a lot. And he says also that the Chazdanish also had a special chibah for Rebuva Margolis. And he was very makbut to quote things that he saw from Rebuva Margolis in his name. And it's interesting is because a lot of people, especially in Bnei Brak, were not um, didn't like Rebuva Margolis' uh, his Tzioni aspect to him. So much so, I remember, I think I saw it, but I heard about it, like the Margolis Ayam was allowed in Panovich, so to speak, but the Bacham always remarked to cross out um, the dating in the beginning of the Sefer because it's a Zionistic thing, but Marachan Kanievsky had no problem with him, and he quotes him Kaseder in his Kiryat Melech. Um, now, Baruch Chaim Kanievsky at the end of the Sefer does say he's not he's not saying that the Rambam really had the Zayar. It could be the Rambam had another early Makar from Ga'inim that might have had the Zayar, but, but be that as it may, the Zayar is also another um, thing for Baruch Chaim Kanievsky. To conclude, 
with one with one last um, um, piece of information relating to all this is that there's a Rambam in the, the Rambam, as I said, doesn't usually quote his Makairis. And he, do, he, he, he says things, Tam, does the Rambam ever quote a Tana or a Moira in his Sefer? So it seems the story goes, um, uh, Rabbi, Zalman, uh, Rabbi Chesko Faivo brings down the story, that one time someone went to him and said um, about a certain Rambam, where the Rambam quotes a name of a Tana. This was in, in um, actually this was the name of a Amira. And the name of the Amira was Weir in Hilchas Mashpatim, where he quotes Rava. Okay. Um, and the Shaila was, does the Rambam ever do such a thing? So uh, the story goes, the Zalman said that um, he remembers one another such place. Rechaim Kanievsky, again, with, with his incredible Bukhiyas, whatever is pshat in this story with Reb Zalman, if there is a pshat even, but Rechaim Kanievsky in a few places has a long list of different places where the Rambam is quoted um, by, uh, the, the, sorry, that the Rambam is quoting either a name of Tanaim or Amaram. He has this list in the back of a Sefer, and then in the various editions, he adds to um, this list. Akapanim, this is some of the things that I think we could learn from from um, um, this incredible Chibar Kiryat Melech, where Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky uses incredible Yeda in Taira, and he used this special Yeda of his in, in, in Taira, to, of all areas of Taira, as I mentioned, in Yushalmi, in Bavli, in Taisefta, in Midrashi Halacha, of even Chiburim that no one uses today, um, or very few people use today, such as Medrash um, uh, Mechilda the Rajbi, to 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 find thousands of makayrus of the Rambam in this Chibur. and and it's remarkable, and it's a, it's good to know it's available on Hebrew books that this this Chibur Kiryat Melech exists, and not only does it exist, it's it's to to there's two things we can learn. One is in case someone has a Rambam doesn't have the makar to look over there. Yes, we have Frankel Rambam Bar Hashem has an incredible wealth of information. But second, it's 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 we learn from here that the, we see the the use. It's not only that he sat and learnt. Reb Chaim just sat and learnt, and um, Kaseder as a, um, um, his chayvus as a, as he liked to call it. But he he used it for his chiburim, and this is the first such chibur that I would like to demonstrate. One Makuda, we could learn how he it was just. Remarkable what he did with the Sefer Kiryat Melech, and that's why it impressed so many Gedolim, as his father in the Askama of it called it Sefer Anifla. Um, um, that that's the first of the Sefer of, of the Svarim of, of the many many Svarim of Chaim Kanievsky that I hope to discuss. Okay, wow, fascinating, a lot of information to digest. I don't know how you put it all together to give it over in such a short amount of time. Okay, so thank you for this, Mitzvah um, Shem. Let's get back together, focus on some of the other Svarim, some of the unique Svarim. And hear a little bit about, you know, how Reb Chaim was able to put together some of the other svarim. What were the ideas of the other svarim, the chibrum that he wrote? Thank you very much.